What's up, owners? It's your host, Ray Grandois of Owners Inspiration, where we take ownership, accountability, and responsibilities of our lives. Today, we have a special guest, Joshua Rucker, a.k.a. Ruck, and we're going to talk about the benefits of exercise with the spinal cord injury. Joshua Rucker is not only an athlete, he's a bodybuilder, a personal trainer, a superstar, overall rock star, my man from Oklahoma State, my teammate. And I'm happy to have you, Josh. How's it going, my man? Pretty good, man. How you doing? I'm excellent, man. You know, fighting through the battles and fighting through all these things in life, man. Just taking it one day by day. For those who don't know you, Josh, can you tell the people who is Joshua Rucker? Yeah, man. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually just a guy, man, just trying to change people's lives, man, uh, with exercise and nutrition um you, you know and just help them out man because a lot of people have misconception of information about you know what they need to really do in life and stuff and you know i've just been studying myself exercise science um science nutrition um strength and conditioning i just want to be the best performance and in, in, in individual for myself but i want to show so many other people man uh just the benefits of exercise and what it can really do for your your life and living uh moving forward as we age so why are you so passionate about exercise and health is it because of your spinal cord injury like what what made you so passionate about this particular area because i do know like you're an elite bodybuilder we'll get into that later or oh, was an elite bodybuilder in the past and had a great accomplishments in that area. However, what got you so passionate about wanting to work out and exercise and be healthy and be fit? You know, I've always been in, I've always been in exercise sports. Um, definitely always trying to better myself with strength. And, you know, obviously, um, you know, I always want to get into something. I was brought up that way from my you know father. Um, but why I'm so more passionate into like nutrition and stuff is because you know, I, I've always, I've grown up with an overweight family. Um, you know, my dad was overweight, dealt with a lot of medical problems. Um, my mom actually just got done um, with cancer and she had all her um, like uh, ovaries and everything taken out to get rid of all the cancer. And to be honest, you know, a lot of people are like, it's, it's, it's not hereditary you don't just have cancer in the family you just pass it on a lot of it is with the way you live and what you put in your mouth um, again my dad was overweight uh, he actually just took his life a couple years ago and yeah man it's just you know, it, yeah man you know it, it it's it was it's sad it, it's sad but you know you, you know i just feel like i have this um gift now to just show people in my situation, you know, the benefits of exercise and nutrition, um, especially people with disabilities, because obviously I have a disability. Now, don't get me wrong, it, it is beneficial for everybody. But people with disabilities, you know, they think they got to work or oh, I'm already got to work hard because of my disability. But what I realized is me exercising and staying healthy has helped me to stay sickness and disease free and helped me to live independent. So, you know, me, um, you know, growing up with overweight family and stuff, that's where the nutrition came from. But the exercise really, I was always pushed to be the best athlete that I could be no matter what I played. Um, you know, I've done, you know, my background, yeah, I've done, been paralyzed 21 years and I've done multiple sports. I earned my IFBB, which is a professional level for wheelchair bodybuilding. Um, I did the 2018, I qualified for the world championships for adaptive CrossFit and I ended up winning. I went against people congrats, that were, congrats. thank you. Thank you. I went, against people that were, I went against people that were amputees, um, spinal bifida. And I was just like, wow, like how am I going to compete against these guys walking in with fake legs and then taking off their leg, and getting in a wheelchair. But I did, I, I, I stayed true to myself. I knew how hard I worked and, you know, that that's a little bit of just my background. Then I kind of got out of competing and um, 
you know, don't get me wrong, I think about competing every day still, basketball, you name it, uh, powerlifting, uh, bodybuilding. But, I, you know, it, it just takes a lot. Now that I'm about to be 40 and I've been working really hard on myself, I just really want to help people to understand the benefits of exercise and nutrition and to help them to help live, a, you know, a long, nice, healthy life, really. Yeah, I, I, I commend you for all that adversity and still pushing through and still accomplishing what you have accomplished despite your adversity. And so with owning your inspiration, it's all about taking accountability and ownership. So can you tell me, if it's not too personal, when did you start to take accountability and ownership and the responsibility for your particular life in your spinal cord injury time frame so just for example for me like i didn't start to take accountability and responsibility till 10 years prior 10 years prior after my um spinal cord injury at oklahoma state i actually dropped some laundry on the floor going to do some laundry and like in that moment i realized i was in a wheelchair because before my mom would have do help me with laundry cook and i had to do everything on my own i had to cook i had to clean i had to study I had to manage my emotions. So I had all this pent up anger and whatever you want to call it, just hurt. And once I got to Oklahoma State, I had to deal with it. And so it took me like 10 years after the spinal cord injury to be like, you know what? I'm in a wheelchair. What am I? What am I? What am I? I, I need to do something about it. I need help. Um, I mean, you know, my my father and my mother always taught me to be strong and independent no matter what you know i was um in the beginning when i first got with my mom i was i lived with my mom for like the first couple of years when i first got paralyzed and i noticed that she did everything for me and i noticed that things were hard so to be honest i'd say for 21 years i've been paralyzed i'd say like you know uh, 18 years, I kind of been doing it on my own because I had to figure out my, you know, I looked at my mom one day and I was like, I need to go and live on my own. I need to be able to, you know, um, sacrifice and go through all this hardship to be able to live this life independent. And she was like, no, you don't need to do that right now. But and I was just like, yeah, I do. Because if not, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. So, yeah, it was kind of hard for me in the beginning because obviously I felt like I was, you know, uh, letting my mom down because I don't think she understood right away of why I wanted to leave her and just like go on my own and like struggle. And it was, it was a struggle, man. <laughs> Living on my own and learning how to use the bathroom and doing everything. It was a struggle and it was hard. And there was days I'd cry. And, but I felt like that's the way she taught me. And, you know, that's what made me strong. So like when I came to Oklahoma and stuff, I was already been living on my own, doing my own thing forever. Um, so really it wasn't hard for me. What, what to me was hard was getting my health and my life together because for a long time, I kind of abused like alcohol and stuff. And I don't really talk about that much, but I should because it was, I, I just partied all the time and I just drank and I really didn't take accountability of my life in a, in a way of like being respectful and kind of, you know, being respectful towards myself, let alone who knows how, when people are around me, cause I was just acting crazy. But I felt like that was like me masking, uh, me being paralyzed. I was just always drinking and just partying, trying to be that fun guy and that cool guy and not really think about what I was going through. So, yeah, it was, it was, that part right there was kind of hard, but I felt like I was always, I took accountability of myself right away. Um, but I've been going, in February, I'll be four years sober. And Congrats, congrats. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. I, uh, I'm very proud of it, man. Me and my wife been going through a lot. We've been uh, married um, 10 years. We're going on 11 years together for 14. You know, it's been a hard road. We broke up for like nine months uh, because I was just out of control. You know, I was drinking too much, just not giving her respect. It's 
all everyone to think about. And again, I felt like that what that part was just me, you know, um, not not taking accountability of my life and just trying to like just be drunk all the time and just you know be like ah oh, not worry about it as long as I was having fun as long as I you know wasn't feeling all the pains around me. But like I said, I've already took accountability of me being in a wheelchair in a certain sense of being independent and working hard and making my own food and clean and washing my own clothes. But I didn't take accountability in myself because I was still like trying to numb the pain of me being paralyzed, I guess, you know. And again, I've, you know, just kind of rambling on through a whole bunch of stuff. I always had that mentality of, of, of being the best in whatever I did, but it still wasn't being the best because I wasn't taking my life serious with health and stuff. I was just like, well, if I work out and I'm just going to be the best, but I ate whatever I wanted and I got sick and I, and I had to deal with, you know, like UTIs and stuff, things are being paralyzed. Um, and then uh, just drinking and, and, and not having to think about none of that because I was like kind of like numbing all the pain. Um, so for me, a lot of things are, are, are was different. You know, now I feel like I finally took accountability myself because I'm like actually worrying about my, my, my marriage and, and my life and my health. When, when I was younger, I never did. But I was already independent and stuff, and I was already strong and stuff because that's just the way my family and my mother and my father brought me up. So, yeah, I kind of took that right away when, it, when, when, when I got paralyzed. No, no. You Thank you for being so transparent and vulnerable because I think it's going to help a lot of people because sometimes um, people want to get healthy. However, for you, it came natural. For some people, it may not. And some for and for others, they may be dealing with um, other things that is preventing them to get to their health. And it may be, I don't know, smoking, drinking, something that's just not helping them. And they need to hear someone like you that actually like, hey, look, I stopped this because I wanted healthy a healthy marriage. So sometimes it's not only just about exercise it's a holistic approach of like just being happy in life and no for sure has, everybody has the I wanna, right to do what they want to do you know what i mean and it's not no judgment yeah yeah go ahead no i wanted to say that like yeah it wasn't like uh easy because again i i was brought up with the overweight family we ate out all the time i ate i ate fast food um and, and I'm, I'm just being real none of that's healthy <laughs> That's that's not healthy. When you buy a cheeseburger from McDonald's, that's a dollar something. Like that's the reason why it's so cheap. You know, you go to the store, you, you buy a pack of, of a hamburger. It's way more expensive, to be honest. Yeah. Because yeah, you're gonna make multiple burgers, but uh, it's 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 fast food for a reason. You know, the oils and stuff that they're using. You know, so no, I I didn't come to be healthy right away. Like I just. Ate whatever I wanted. I just I thought, you know, as long as I exercised and all that stuff, I could do whatever. Well, as I got older and I dealt with my my you know medical problems and stuff, and I was dealing with going to the hospital all the time, having bladder problems, you know, having um you know bathroom issues and stuff, kind of going to the bathroom by myself. I didn't understand it. Well, it was the food that I was putting in me. My body just didn't agree with it. So. You know, and then watching my family be sick and my dad be sick and be in and out of the hospital all the time and overweight. Because being overweight, for one, it's it's not being mean. I'm not – a lot of people think, oh, you, oh, you think I'm – you're saying I'm fat or I'm overweight, that you're being mean. No, being overweight just stresses out your body. It stresses out your organs. It stresses out certain things of your body. So you, that's just bad putting more stress on you. So, yes, you kind of want to get the weight down. You definitely need to, you know, I'm not saying you can't enjoy some foods here and there. Because, I mean, I still do. But I just don't do it as much as I used to. Like I said, we used to literally go out to breakfast, out to eat, probably McDonald's or Burger King. Lunchtime would be like all-you-can-eat buffet. We'd literally be there for three hours. Um, at nighttime, we, we, my mom would make dinner or we order like church's chicken. My dad liked that chicken because it was way more greasier. He tasted better. better. Um, then we'd probably get some Dairy Queen at, at, later on that night. Like mm. I ate out. Yeah, I ate out nonstop. So I was just feeding my body with garbage. 
now that I've learned and I follow, you know, these, these, uh, these, uh, PhD science, um, nutrition, uh, doctors, um, you know, dietitians, it has really changed my life of what I've been putting in my body all these years. And I'm like, wow, like I'm so crazy about it now. Like I really am. Sometimes me and my, me and my wife even come and click heads because I'm just so crazy about it because I feel like I just want to be the best version of myself because, you know, anything that you put in your body, period, if it's, you know, even drinking like liquids, uh, eating really can have a, uh, impact on the way you think, the way you make decisions, um, everything, man. Like I've, I've learned so much. So yeah, like being healthy again, going back to that. Yeah. Being healthy wasn't, it didn't come to me easy. I really had to learn the hard way and watching my dad take his life and being overweight. My mom going through cancer and my sister going through her medical problems. She is, she's like a uh, borderline diabetic. That's why I've gotten, I've, I've really have taken, you know, um, this information and I want to try to get it out to people and say, Hey, listen, I've been there. You know, when I deal with a client, cause I'm a personal trainer that's overweight and stuff. And they look at me kind of like, well, how do you know, you know, you're not overweight and stuff. I tell them my story. Well, listen, here's my, you know, my father's been overweight, my mother, my, my sisters. So I definitely know, like my dad was probably 960 pounds at one time. Wow. And you know, I tell them like, so I know what big is to be, what big is like, I, I dealt with it. I had to dress my dad. I had to help him get dressed and I watched him struggle my whole life growing up. So when people try to tell me, well, you're like, I don't know. I, I trust me. I know. And that's what I feel like where now where I'm at, where I want to help people to just be the best version of themselves, no matter what that is. It's not easy. It's not a, it's not a 40 yard dash. This is a marathon. And that's what people don't understand too. There is no magical diet nutrition plan that I can give you. That's going to make you lose that weight and, 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 and have that six pack. What it is, is what can you um, keep doing for a long time, probably the rest of your life that you enjoy. That's what's going to be beneficial. And so, yeah, that, that, that's, that's where a lot of my, you know, <clears throat> um, passion comes from is just, you know, I dealt with it growing up and, and, and I, and I did it to myself by, you know, putting all the toxic, um, alcohol in me and just eating the not good foods. I just had to take, you know, accountability to myself finally of that state. And I just had to keep moving forward and just be the best I could be and then try to help everybody else as, along the way. I love that. And that's one thing that you have been, you have been consistent for years. And that's one thing I can admire about you and celebrate you. Because there's not too many people that can be as consistent, let alone on their two feet, let alone with a spinal cord injury. So my question to you is someone who is, um, has done all these things, has been consistent, has been accomplished in helping so many people um, with spinal cord injuries and without spinal cord injuries, what do you tell the person that um, struggles with staying motivated to exercise and struggling eating the bad stuff? Man, you just gotta, um, you know. Again, it's it's not easy. You gotta you gotta start off start off slow. You know, just do the best you can. Make try to make those good choices. Um, and just think about the benefits of, you know, what exercise can do for you, you know, when you're not motivated. It's like this. Do you want to be in your 50s having the the medical problems that you're going to have if you don't eat right or exercise? You know, um, you're going to you're going to end up being sick some some way if you don't do those things. And yeah. It, it's it's kind of hard to say, hey, you know, just do these things and you'll be motivated because people are like, no, that's not how it works. Me, I kind of feel like it's breaded in me, you know. Um, 
I was kind of raised that way, no matter what, with me exercising stuff like that. The healthy part, I definitely had to fight for, and I still fight every day. Like, I don't know if you ever heard of the crumble cookie. And like, there's this, there's this place called Crumble Cookie, and they, had, they make these, like, oh, amazing yeah, that, yeah. cookies, and they're so delicious. Are they, are they that healthy for you? No, probably not. Are they making good ingredients in it? Probably not. Sugar is not good for you, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, do I have some here and there? Sure I do. I'm not going to lie. But I don't do them as much as I would be back in the day. I would probably eat it three times a week, if not for maybe five yeah. times a week, maybe even every day. But, you know, but I don't do that now. And like, I'm and I'm just like, I know what it's going to do to me. You know, um, the stuff that I've read about, like, dementia and uh, Alzheimer's, the, the, the books that I literally have, have purchased through these PhD um, science nutrition nutritionists, they basically tell you, like, sugar is the cause of Alzheimer's. Sugar is the is one of the causes of you know um, dementia. Like people think it's just like oh it's it's in my family so I'm gonna get it, but but they don't understand it. It really comes down to what we're putting in our mouth. So being telling someone to stay motivated, it's not easy. I can't just be like hey be motivated. That's what you should do. No, you gotta fight for your you you gotta want to be the best version of yourself, and it's not gonna be easy. You know, I fight every, I would love to go get a fast food, you know, meal and not have to cook my own meal or prep food every day. Like, it's a pain in the butt. But I know the benefits of it. And I know that I'm going to be, you know, I, I know me staying out of the hospital. That's what I want to say. I know me staying out of the hospital and not having to worry about that is really beneficial, man. Like, before I was in the hospital all the time and I hated it. But now that I really focus on what, what I'm putting in my body, the nutrients I'm putting in my body, potassium, calcium, um, magnesium, um, you know, good proteins, good fats, good carbohydrates. Because before I would just eat whatever I wanted in, of, in the carbohydrates and stuff like that. And was that beneficial for my exercise performance? Probably not. I, I probably could have been even better. I probably could have been, you know, at the top of my game for – even longer if I would have focused on my nutrition more. So it's, it's, it's hard for everybody to be motivated, man. You just got to think about what you want when, when you're 50, 60, 70, you know, however long you want to live, you know, do you want to be sick? Do you want to be, you know, uh, feeling, you know, nasty all the time or like you just, you just don't have the motivation or you don't have that energy. And again, energy plays in what we put in our mouth. That's like our main source of our energy comes from what we're putting in our mouth. You know, it's like eat, eat, a, eat, a, um, eat a bowl of eggs or, or a plate of eggs and then eat a, eat a plate of um, pancakes. And you tell me how you feel. You tell me what one you feel more energized because I know this. If I eat a stack of pancakes, I'm feeling sluggish. I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling like I just want to go to bed. I eat a thing. I, I eat a plate of eggs. I'm feeling energized. There's so much nutrition in that eggs. You're getting good protein and stuff. Like, not saying pancakes are bad for you, but it's you just got to look at like what kind of stuff are you putting in your body to give you that energy and that motivation to keep going. And that's kind of where I say, well, that's how you're going to stay motivated. Put the good stuff in your body, you know, um, and, you know, you tell me how you feel and how you get motivated. Because, yeah, it's, it's not easy to stay motivated, but you just got to know in the long run, I want to be the best version of myself. And I definitely don't want to be in, in the hospital. I'd rather be where I'm at right now doing the extra you know, uh, meal prepping, eating the certain foods, denying certain foods. Yesterday was Thanksgiving, you know, uh, and guess what? I ate what? Yes, I did. I I, I ate a lot of stuff. You know, <laughs> family ate, made a lot of. There was probably like six dishes of sweets. And the way I've been brought up, like, oh my god, that's the first thing I wanted was those sweets. But do I do that every day? No, I, I can't even tell you the next time I probably eat sweets like that again. Like so, you know, hey, I enjoy myself, but. I was also up this morning. I did a uh, four mile push in my wheelchair with a, a weighted vest on, a 35 pound weighted vest to give me more um, 
Like the ability, I, I believe people that are wheelchairs should definitely do something like that because putting a weighted vest on and pushing around the streets, it, it, it helps you with the stability and it helps you with your kind of the, the, your core strength around where you're paralyzed. And that's, you know, why I have kind of good balance and stuff. A lot of people say I'm fake and stuff. You know, I get a lot of messages on, on Instagram saying I'm fake because of all the stuff that I can do sometimes. And I'm like, I've been working 21 years every day consistently at this stuff like i said every morning i'm probably up every morning at six seven o'clock pushing around the streets with a weighted vest on because i believe it just makes me stronger and there you go that's that's my motivation i just want to be the best version of myself and if it's hard you know it's like this things that are harder will definitely make um you stronger the things that are easier well guess what gonna probably make you a little weaker because you're not, not working as hard for it. Man, a lot of gems, a lot of jewels. What I'm hearing is first off, first is desire. Someone ha must have that desire to want to live a better life, have the desire to be the best version of themselves. Secondly, be aware of what's going in their body and also have the desire to have put the right things in their body as well and then third i'm hearing you you gotta put that work there is no replacement for putting in that work and so i think but just by listening to you i heard i heard a lot and i strongly believe people who are listening that wants that uh, motivation or inspiration they'll understand the motivation and inspiration is is really in the fire yep josh josh said you know he lost his his stepfather you know that killed himself which motivated him which inspired him josh also said he had struggles with his health you know drinking and eating all types of stuff and he realized death was knocking that was motivation and inspiration. So when people talk about motivation and inspiration, they say he called him fake. And said he, the things that he's doing is fake. He's so motivational, inspirational. They call him the man fake. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like what is like the man is the man's been 21 years with a spinal cord injury and he's getting hate. And when I call when I usually when people hate on hate on other people they usually hate themselves because they cannot believe how this person took this pain and turned it into purpose and i'm telling you it took fire it took cutting it took crushing it took all of that to get to where josh is where he is right now and i'm so happy that you're able to share and be so transparent about your relationship, your marriage, the drinking and the overcoming and being tw four years sober. Like, it's not all easy. Like just him being transparent helps people to see like, no matter where you're at, you can still move forward to where you want to go because Josh can't tell you where you want to go. I can't tell you and say, Hey, go For here. Sure. You got to want to go there yourself and say, okay, maybe I, let's see if I can help you get to your goal and help you get there however you have to desire it on your own man listen a lot of jewels let's talk about let's touch this topic as far as like the you you mentioned the 40 pound or 45 pound weighted uh thing so what kind of barriers have you faced with a spinal cord injury um like tr doing your best to work out like the gym setting up your own gym you're so resilient, but other people may not be there yet. And so they may face a barrier and be like, oh, I don't want to do it. So what type of solutions did you find while facing those barriers with the spinal cord injury? Yeah, you just got to, you know, find, find what works for you, really. Um, and that can be anything. When I do like YouTube videos and I show my exercise, I tell people, you got to, you got to use the weight, you got to do the things that you know, you're capable of doing, you know, I like a, a home gym. I like a little gym in my garage. You know, I used to go to the, uh, like a, a gym all the time. 
but I just like doing it in my garage. Um, for one, I, I kind of grew up watching the, these uh, bodybuilders working out of garages and stuff. And that kind of just got embedded in me. But also I got things that are hooked that are like modified in my garage for me, you know, seats and, and, um, I have a belt that I put around me all the time so I can hold me to the bench. Um, you know, I, I actually got a chair through this company called Performax that has like a fifth wheel in the back. So I wouldn't fall back. Um, and on my everyday chair, I was like, I want an everyday chair, but I want a chair that I can just like put something on it, like, like a wheel in the back. So I don't fall back and, and I can work out in my chair instead of having to get into another chair, like a, like a basketball chair or something like that. Um, so they created one, uh, you know, just finding things that, you know, like I said, that, that were beneficial for me, that, that helped me out, like whatever that is, you know, straps, um, belts, you know, whatever kind of weights you need to use. A lot of people don't like to transfer on machines. That's another thing too. Like they rather would work out in their chair, maybe with some dumbbells and stuff, you know? Uh, yeah, like anything is better than nothing you know and when it comes to exercise and and i want to say it to you earlier like it's like this like if you want a better house you want a newer a bigger house you want a better house you want to own your own house you want to you want a newer car you have to work for that that's the same thing with your body you know if you want to look a certain way you gotta work you gotta work a certain way you know you, you want to be a certain healthy you want to be able be you know have more motivation i'm telling you if you really pay attention to what you're putting in your body i guarantee your motivation is going to be different because some of those things that we put in our body it's going to go back to this all the time i'm going to not stop saying this i'm going to re repeat this over and over the foods because that right there will make you feel different have a different kind of motivation to work out again if i'm eating candy all the time I'm not going to be motivated to, to exercise. My body's just not going to want to. I'm going to probably want to just lay around and just maybe play video games all day. Like I play video games still, but I still get in my exercise. I, it's like it's like I plan out my whole day like that. Like I have a, basically a schedule. All right, if I'm going to go play video games, I only have like this an hour of doing this. And then I'm going to go read a book because now I want to stimulate my brain. Um, and I, and 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 now I'm going to read about you know new, more nutrition because I want to have more information to, to back myself up when I'm telling people to eat these certain foods and stuff or exercise this certain way. I want people to do this. So I study the, the movements. I study the, the, uh, the body mechanics and how things move because especially being paralyzed when you, I have a lot of clients that are able body and they have full function of their body. And when I first started being a personal trainer and working at a commercial gym, people would look at me like, how is this guy in a wheelchair going to teach me how to use my lower body? And guess what? I know the body mechanics. I still know how the body moves. I know how the muscles contract. And when you know that knowledge and you explain it to them, I had people coming into my gym before I moved there. Can I get, I want the guy in the wheelchair to train me. Like I've heard nothing goodness about him. I've gotten people to lose tons of weight. I got a 62 year old. Uh, I got I got a 62 year old lady right now that I've, I've been training. I got a 52 year old. She's lost over 27 pounds. She says that I'm like probably one of the best things that's ever happened in her life. You know, um, that's my motivation. That, that's like the number one motivation is just helping people to get and understand the benefits and how they can feel with good nutrition and exercise. And then someone with a spinal cord injury, it's so beneficial because the number one thing is being independent. Like who wouldn't want to be independent? That makes you feel wonderful about yourself. And, and yes, it's going to be a struggle. It's never not going to be not, it's never not going to be hard. I'll tell you that right now, like it's never not hard. There's days that I wake up and I don't want to put my shoes on because there's a certain way that I have to put my shoes shoes on. You know, I don't want to get on the bed and get dressed. It's like I always have to I have to transfer into my I bought a Jeep and I'm actually in a big Jeep now. And because I'm like because I can, because I want to. Like I'm gonna do it if if I want to. You know, a lot of people are like, Oh, you're you're in a wheelchair now. You should probably just get a van, and, you know. And I'm like, well, what if I don't want a van? What if I want that big four by four Jeep still? Like.
I'm going to exercise to keep myself strong so I can have that. It's, it's, it's very hard with someone in a wheelchair, man, but when you work little, little increments every day, day in and day out, to being consistent, it will all add up, and trust me, your life, you will be better. You will be stronger. Are we still going to struggle? Yes, everybody struggles with a disability or not, but it really is about what you want in your life and how hard you really want to work. That's my inspiration and motivation to everybody. I always say that when I do my videos on YouTube. I want to inspire and motivate everybody with exercise because I do believe, and I, and I listen to this doctor say this, the person that's overweight, smokes, drinks, but exercises consistently is healthier than the person that doesn't drink, that doesn't smoke, and that, doesn't, and that is not overweight but does not exercise. The person that does all those bad things and exercises is healthier. And I know that's crazy, right? Uh, yeah. But but that's how much of a of a effect exercise has on your body. Think about it. You're exercising, you're thinking about repetitions, how many reps you're doing, the burning. So you're stimulating your brain. Your brain's thinking right now as you're doing exercise. As you're do, moving, you're doing your joints, you're, do, you're, you're, you're strengthening your ligaments, holding a dumbbell in your hand, you're strengthening your bone density just by holding a weight, by gripping something. You're changing that density in your arm alone. Obviously, someone that, that can use the lower body when they're just squatting with their body weight, putting that stress on their bones, that's helping their bones, that's helping their ligaments, that's helping their tendons. People that get older, they're like, oh, I'm just getting older. Everybody's getting older just at a different rate. But guess what? You stopped moving like you were young again. That's why you're getting older. I know 60, 70, 80, 90 years old that are probably in the best shape ever because they keep moving. It's been consistent their whole life. You know, you want – eventually someone's – as you get older and you stop uh, exercising, you stop, like I said, gripping stuff and doing that bone for that bone density, you're going to fall down. You're going to break a hip or something. That's because you've let your body get weakened, your bone density, you know. I mean, my, my, my uh, wife's mother just fell down and she broke her wrist. I got her moving around every day. She's 66 years old and she smokes like a chimney, but she's healthier because she's moving because I got her doing daily exercises. It's not easy, but you can change your life by just doing the little simple things. It's just like I said, getting up in the morning, get, getting sunlight, that's natural vitamin D. Walking through the, 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 the your, your park that's close to your house or walking your neighborhood, just walking alone is beneficial. Like start slow, but Anybody and everybody can do it, you know. And yes, I want to go back real quick to people in wheelchairs. Like, yeah, of course. With someone that has, someone that has a spinal cord injury or any kind of disability, it's so beneficial for you because you know we already have half our body not working. I'm paralyzed from my belly button down, so half my body doesn't work already. So, how can I work my lower body? Well, I really can't. You know, I I, I can't control nothing down so what do i do i have a stand-up machine i stand myself up every day at least 10 minutes a day that's for my bone density you know i i have the machine that you can actually use your upper body to move your your legs so it's like a glider so i'm doing this with my arms as my legs are going and you know yeah some days it's a pain in the butt but i know it's so beneficial for me that i've had people that i know in wheelchairs that have fell out of their their chair caught their fall and have snapped their femurs because they have not stood up in a in in any stand-up machine and put any stress on their bones for over 20 years what do you expect that those bones are going to get brittle like if you want a better life like you said earlier you got to have that determination to no matter what better yourself and that's going to be a little bit of work you know no one's saying you have to do a three-hour workout. That's crazy. You can get a, literally a 20-minute workout in. If you put a good intensity, you're, 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 you're benefiting 
your immune system. You're benefiting your bones. You're benefiting your, your, we call it skeletal muscle. The number one organ that's the number one organ in your body is muscle, period. Your muscle does everything. Your brain's a muscle. Your lungs are a muscle. Your kidneys are a muscle. Things filter through all that, right? Your heart's a muscle. Wow. If you ain't strengthening your muscles, how are you going to keep living? They that the um research just came out that basically, if you want to have a, a longevity life, you want to live longer, feel better. You need to worry about your strength of your muscle because it it it, it benefits you in so many ways. From brain stimulation down to, like I said, bone density, uh, growing muscle. You know, the, the the person that has more muscle will probably fight off diseases better than the person that doesn't. Man. You know, and I and I know I just talked a lot, but that's so much, so much passion I have. I have so much. I passion love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's why. That's why. That's why I you have know? you back on because I know you live this. And when someone lives something, as soon as you get them talking. They're going to go on and on and on and on. And that's what it is. That's what it's all about. Keep giving the people. I'm going to chop it up and I'm going to put it out there for the world to eat it up because they need it. They need it, man. Because all Good. I'm out, I, I just enhanced Definitely. my delivery of it. We did. I remember when we first started, Josh did an interview with me. We did it on Zoom. Now I'm on Ecamm. I got my all flashy and dashy <laughs> to give y'all the sparkle because sometimes people... When it comes to like information, it's not necessarily like the information is out not out there. It's just how it's delivered it to them. And so sometimes right. I do my best to deliver it in a way, the best way I can deliver it so they can receive it and be like, ooh, what's that? What he talking about? Dang, I like how he said that. Wow. You know, and so everything that you said motivated me. I've been I've been uh, working out for five months now. I'm back in okay. the gym, hand cycling, um, rock climbing, uh, swimming. Good, uh, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you you played a major role in that. I appreciate that, man. You, see, seeing you working out and um, Adam as well, y'all constantly moving. And I'm like, dang. And, you know, I can technically say, well, I got to lay down. But it's like, well, if you stay la lay down, whatever's inactive is going to stay inactive. And whatever's in motion is going to stay in motion. So I got to get in motion and now I've been in motion and I haven't stopped since. And, and I love to see just be in contact with you, just talking with you, texting you. I remember I texted you like, yo, I'm in the gym, man. Like I ain't playing with this. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, uh, it, it's been, it's been a journey for me. And, it, it, and as I say, it's not easy. Like he said, we all going to go through those days, but however, you got to want it so much where it's like, I want to talk about real quick that pressure. I want to talk about that pressure sore. So you had a pressure yeah. sore too one time, and yeah, That's don't get me wrong. Like, many, many pressure sores. Not yeah, yeah. So 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 I. And I still get them on and off. I plan like that's another thing. I plan my day at least like an hour. I'll get off my my butt and I'll be just laying on my side or my stomach. So so I'm off that you know, uh, my my behind for about an hour. Well. I don't. I, have, I also have noticed though the, the the more movement I do, and the stronger I am, the more I'll, I'll I'll lift up and I'll do pressure relief a little bit more. So you know, yeah, that that actually, yeah, exactly, that has helped me too because it's like, well, these are the things that people don't actually don't have to worry about, especially if they're able body. They don't have to worry about like pressure being on like in their in their their, their buttocks or whatever your your sacrum, wherever it is, shoes, your feet. Um, but I have noticed that me being more active, I don't really have to worry about that as much. But again, like I said, I kind of plan that in my day. You know, I, I, it's just part of my day. I, I have it on my watch. They'll go off and it'll be like, time to get off your butt. So I'll just go get off my butt, read for about an hour, you know, stay off my butt. Like I said, you got to plan for success, no matter what that success is. And you should always want to better yourself with your health and that's going to be definitely through nutrition and exercise and you know the more that i can get on people's platforms and spread my awareness i don't care see that's the difference of me even if i had 
50 million people follow me. Hopefully that one day that goal can be accomplished. Yeah. I will do everything that I'm doing still the way I do it. I'll never ask for anything. I always say, you know what? I'll come on anybody's show. I don't care how famous I am. It doesn't matter because I want to get, I believe that's what my purpose is now. I want to keep giving all this information to inspire and motivate people all around the world to just be the best version of themselves. And that's only going to be through exercise and nutrition. And, you know, as long as you keep doing that, I think it, you'll be great, man. And, and the more that I can... The more that I can help that and, and, and keep get my word out there to people, and no matter even if the purpose, a person thinks I'm, dude, he's just talking crazy. Like, I, I wish I had the motivation, but I should show you these DMs that I get all the time. Man, I, I just got paralyzed. Um, man, I'm, I'm this person not even paralyzed. I've been lazy, and I see you do your uh, pull ups with the wheelchair, and you're putting a, a dumbbell on your lap, dude. You got me back in the gym, like. I, I want to thank you, and it just touches my heart. I'm just like, wow. Like when I see these messages, I'm like, wow. Now don't get me wrong. You got the trolls out there that back in the day that used to affect me. You got the trolls. Oh well, you're doing all that upper body work. Don't forget to do your legs. Okay, don't skip leg day. And I'm just like, you know what? Hey, at least they're seeing me. At least they're seeing me, and they get to hey, if, if that's what they want to say, then that's what they want to say. I'm still inspiring and motivating them, obviously, because they're obviously watching my video. So, you know, yeah, the, you know, the, like I said, the more I can get on people's platforms and keep just spreading this word, I feel like one day, hopefully, maybe I will have a big company see me and bring me on to help me get that, uh, my vision and, 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 and my awareness more out there. And, you know, like I said, that'd be great because that's, that's kind of where I, my vision is, is like, I want to be on the biggest platform to like, like Joe Rogan, man, if I can make it on Joe Rogan, because he, he, he is, he's a big platform. He, he has millions of people. If you can literally, if I can get my word out there to millions of people, the benefits of exercise and nutrition and you know, how you, 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 you're, you're going to enjoy a better life if you, if you really concentrate on those things. Well, thank you, Josh, for bringing ownership vibes to the table and spreading that message and actually bringing forth that vision because you heard it here first and own your inspiration. Josh is going to be on Joe Rogan. Yeah, 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 yeah. We he going to be there, yeah, man. Hey, hey we're he going to hey, be there, you know man. What? Just this You're conversation. Gonna be Joe Rogan. Your podcast can be Joe Rogan one day. You can be touching. Oh man, thank people. you, thank you. Like that's thank that's you. that's the goal. You know, that's we, the goal, man. I've been working hard, Josh. I've been working hard, hard, Josh. You know, they need to understand that like, it, it's not easy for anybody. Keep keep it up, though, man. Keep it up. Like I said, it's not easy for anybody, but. You got to work hard at anything you want in life, period. And your your health and your and your your health should be number one because that's how you're going to be able to think. You're going to perform in anything you're doing, even on a normal task of taking care of kids, living a family, um, wanting to have a uh, um, you know a, a amazing podcast, wanting to have you know um, a, a business. Like it's it's hard work. Like, but you got to work at it to get it. So, man. Let the preacher say amen. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Yo, Josh, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on the show, man. This is just another day of the life of the ownership club where we keep owning it. We keep striving for excellence and keep doing what we do, man. So thank you, man. Listen, is there anything else that you want to say before we, we sign out? Man, I did a lot of talking. I probably thought I said a lot of things, man. Like I said, I just, you know, uh, just work hard at whatever you want in life. You know, nothing's easy. Um, if you want it, you got to work towards it, period. Uh, definitely keep on your health. Definitely make sure you get some kind of exercise better than no exercise. And like I said, you know, start off slow. It ain't going to be easy. There's going to be days and you're not going to want to do anything. You're not going to be motivated. Just remember the end game of where your, your, your vision is and whatever that is, that's what's going to motivate you to keep on going. So 
I appreciate you even having me. There you have it, man. Ray Grandois. Ray, Ray Grand. And Joshua Rucker, man. Rolling with the ownership flow. See y'all next time.